So the Blet Prize is awarded is award annually to the best book, as well known in science and technology studies. This year, the Black Prize Committee received 91 nominations. Many of these books were works of great quality, some of which have already made a substantial contribution to our field. There was, however, a book that was out of the ordinary, a book that stood out and can be considered an event in its own right. The 2013 Black Prize goes to the Belgian philosopher Isabel Stengers. The English edition of her work Cosmopolitics, Volumes 1 and 2. Now, this is the first time a book not originally published in English receives the Fleck Prize. It's an also, it is also an unusual and somewhat delayed choice in that the book was first written in the late 1990s. The award thus reflects and acknowledges some of the transnational currents of thought that inform our field, as well as the slow, sometimes subterranean processes of intellectual nourishment that propel STS. Some of us also got books out there a long time ago, hoping that can do Cosmic politics is a complex, multifaceted being, making it be. The book connects familiar discussions in science and technology studies with an original philosophical perspective on scientific practice. It incarnates a deep understanding of the modern scientific ethos and develops a speculative proposal for rethinking knowledge of politics and the relationship between different scientific practices and disciplines, not least the relationship between scientific practices and the social studies of science. Cosmopolitics is a challenging read and unabashedly controversial book, yet controversial in a critical and friendly way. It has made its mark since its original publication in French, but its English edition has provoked and continues to provoke new and unusual conversations in SDS. It is a work, most importantly, that is showing its power and relevance to the work of a new generation of SDS scholars. Now, unfortunately, Isabel Stengers is unable to come to San Diego to receive the prize. But fortunately, a very good friend of hers well known to our SDS community and also a Fleck laureate has accepted going to have him to impersonate her and receive the prize on her behalf. So please welcome Professor Donna Haraway. You all know impersonating Isabel is um, truly not possible. If anyone in this world is a one-off, it's Isabel. Isabel's thinking changes other thinking, and that I know personally from the ways that she has reached into the marrow of my own work on the biologies and philosophies of multi-species entanglements, as well as from the evidence of a diverse community of scholars in the United States and Europe. Sanders does herself what she examines, that is, she designs new abstractions that moor her readers also to engage the irreducible singularities, the burning friction, the indispensable specificities that are the flesh and bone of scientific and philosophical achievements. She's in risk taking love with the difficulty and promise of concepts in their rankings, materiality, and situatedness. Sanger's cosmopolitical analyses show how scientific constructions and constructors are engaged players, among others, in the most fundamental worldly questions about, uh, about what Maria Prita Baracasa calls matters of care, complementing the tours matters of concern. For these questions, the usual resources of tolerance or the supposed transcendental authority of expert knowledge or the generalist, the generalist appeals to a common good all fail. I find Stanger shaping of tools for a different, non-conscient cosmopolitics, a source of hope for what might yet, just maybe, still be possible without the deadly dream of a final peace. And so it's in that sense that I take up Isabel's own words and her debts to colleagues and ancestors to which I add more ancestors who do cat's cradle with her, her string figures and compost piles, 
for worldliness. Because Isabel's list of those to whom she is grateful include the living and the dead. They include Diderot and Whitehead, as well as her living companions. She says, I am, I am grateful that as a young philosopher, I was protected from, or rather ignorant of, the imperative, the old imperative, about the distance supposed to be maintained with the so-called object or terrain. That may be free to learn from what Karen Barad calls interaction, that I learned practicing an art of tax cradling, where my specific responsibility was toward understanding and caring for the connecting string, for what was between, and demanded that I discover each time my own string moves. Or as she wrote in another context, knowing that what you take has been held out entails a particular thinking between. It does not demand fidelity, still less fealty, rather a particular kind of loyalty, the answer to the trust of the held out hand. Even if this trust is not in you, but in created uncertainty. Even if the consequences and meaning of what has been done, thought, or written do not belong to you any more than they belong to the one you take the relay from, one way or another, the relay is now in your hands, together with the plan that you do not proceed with mechanical confidence. Close quote. So she says, uh, that her first step is toward those who made this learning both possible and necessary. For physicist Ilya Fugerchin, the author of Order Out of Chaos with Isabel, as a bit, with, with whom she studied as a very young philosopher, and she learned to resist, else she would have been devoured by his passion. She acknowledges the debt toward hypnotherapist Leon Chertok, who called on me to help him in his struggle against the way hypnosis was treated as a despised object in France, but in such a way that she felt no need to practice or experience hypnosis herself. Perhaps these were the sorts of moves that led Isabel to embrace the Wiccan uh, US eco actors which Starhawk, or to write with, in a very different mode with Philippe Pignard, capital sorcery. She also acknowledges her debt toward Bruno Latour, long-term friend and co-thinker, agonist and friend, where my part was to play the idiot, as Deleuze characterizes it, the one who may learn from the other's move, but still pulls a string and makes a knot that signals there may yet be a slowing down. And I added myself, not so fast, Isabel. There is truly an SF cat spread game between you and Bruno. Many tentacles, many digits, many attachments, Sites. She also says that she acknowledges a debt toward all the others whose hands would partner mine without obeying them or trying to have them obey. She says, my use of the cat's cradling figure today points toward one who taught me, uh, who taught me that that is what I have done, among many other things. But she concludes with an, uh, with an acknowledgement toward those with whom she works today. That is to say, the members of the Groupe des Tours Constructivistes, or the geckos, not, uh, not Danko's gecko, but Isabel's gecko, the Groupe uh, group Constructivistes, uh, the group des Tours Constructivistes, uh, which is a group of young people um, that is very like the kinds of groups that Rosie Grandotti nurtured. For example, the next generation that itself was a kind of compost pile for Maria Victor of La Casa, who was Isabel's own PhD student, who loops back through and makes the heat that sustains us all. So Isabel finishes by saying, I am grateful that we have learned together how to spin strings among and around us, and to trust each other's pulling and relaying hands in the rather insalubrious environment of the knowledge economy, which is the university today. <laughs>